Hey, so, so many of my teacher friends have been reaching out to me and asking me, Amy, how can I take this PDF and make it so students can actually interact with it, type their answers um, into or onto the worksheet? Um, Amy, how can I take some of my resources that I grabbed from my classroom that I trust and I know are connected to what my students need to be working on at this time and make it so that they're digital so that they can interact with it, meaning type on it or in it. So no one should be trying to go into Google Docs and try to type something that looks exactly like a worksheet that they found online or in a resource book. Uh, remembering that we should always be giving credit to the creators of these worksheets. It is okay to copy them to use for our students' education. That's what they were made for. Um, but we shouldn't be trying to take credit for this as our own. So I'm gonna show you a way that we can make a copy um, and that students can interact. We're used to copying and students interacting um, in school, but we don't have access to our copy machine. We don't have access to our students in person. Um, a lot about our game has changed. So I thought it would be helpful to share a couple of tips on how to create editable worksheets for students digitally, whether it is from a PDF or from a workbook that you happen to have with you at home. So the first thing I'm gonna show is a PDF I have on the screen, um, comparing characters. It's a skill that my students are working on right now in fifth grade. Um, I'm gonna zoom out so we can see the entire worksheet because we're gonna need to take a picture on our screen of it. Um, so I want my students to be able to interact with this, to type their answers in it and then share it with me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be taking a screen capture in um, or on a Microsoft operating device like I have, that's called a snipping tool. So if you don't have it in your um, toolbar, you can just type snipping tool and then it will pop up. I'm gonna click new, cause I'm gonna make a new one and my screen goes dull. I'm going to use this crosshairs to drag and only select what I want as my worksheet, what I want the computer to take a picture of. I don't need my whole entire screen here. All right, perfect. So there's my worksheet. Now I'm gonna save this to my desktop. It is important that we don't get our desktops completely um, clustered, especially during this remote learning time. So make sure you are giving specific names to your files. When I go to save as, I am going to be putting this as compare characters worksheet. And I'm going to do PDF because you notice that um, I have, or I'll do digital PDF so I can remember. You can see I have another compare characters worksheet on my desktop right now. That was from a textbook. So I want to know what's there because from that little itty bitty thumbnail on my desktop, I can't always see and I don't wanna to have to click. All right, so that was really like probably the biggest piece. I made a picture of it. The next thing is in another tab, I want to go into Google Slides. For those of you who are brand new to the G Suite to Google, um, Google Slides is the PowerPoint of Google. So you would think that I'd be going to Google Docs. That's what a lot of people think everything that teachers do should be on and is on. Um, but Google Slides is where it's at. So I'm deleting these other um, little text boxes here because this is my blank canvas for where that worksheet is going to live. I need to import it here and I need to make sure that my page is the correct size right now. This doesn't look like a piece of copy paper. So I'm gonna go to file, and then I'm gonna click on page setup. We all know the size of our copy paper. Teachers, we know copy paper really well. Eight and a half by 11. Um, right now, it's not that. So we're gonna go to custom, and we're gonna type in eight and a half by 11. And you'll notice that it changes to what it should look like. And if I wanted to do it the wide way, I would just simply, I'm sure you could figure this out, go back the same way through page setup and custom, and I do 11 by eight and a half. 
Now I'm going to import the image file. I'm not going to do it just as a regular image. For those of you who have inserted an image in a Google Doc or just in a slideshow, you know that the students, when you send it to them and make a copy for them, they can move it, they can change the size of it, they can even delete it. That is the worst thing. It's happened to me. Huge headache when we're in the classroom with them to troubleshoot. Wouldn't want to have to deal with that remotely. So we're going to actually be putting it in the background so the students couldn't delete it if they wanted to. All right. So as a background, I'm going to be clicking right here to change background. You could also right click and get to change background, but I'm going to do it right here. And then I'm going to go to image. And I'm going to upload because I saved it in my desk or on my desktop. And on my desktop, there it is. Compare character worksheet digital PDF. That's why names are really important too, because I could not have been able to see that perfectly. All right. So my worksheet's here. Watch this. Click, click. Nope. Delete. Nope. So students, they can't move that. And that is clutch. The next thing we want is to name, because I should have done that first. Compare characters. Okay. Really important that the file name connects with it. So I want to now put text boxes in so my students can type. I have fifth graders, so they're a little older. Um, some of my fifth graders could make their own text boxes and would be fine with it. Some, eh, not so much. So I recommend putting a text box in so that students visually can see where they're supposed to click and where they're supposed to type. So that's what we're going to just quickly do now. I recommend zooming in. So you can go to view and zoom. I'm going to zoom in a little bit just so then I can see exactly where I want these text boxes to live. The text box is over here, the box that when you put your mouse over, hovering over it, it says text box. It's the box with the T inside of it. And I'm going to just drag and drop the same way that I did for my screen capture. And I actually like to do a little type here just so my students can see because you'll see when you click off of it, you don't see the box. So students know. Um, if you are concerned and your students haven't really interacted, you may want to say click here to type here. Um, that lets them know like, oh, I see that right now. Let me click. Oh, OK. Now I see how I can type. Um, so now I'm going to copy control C and control V. And if my computer is not too laggy, it shouldn't take us too long from here. So then I'm going to paste another one. That one was bothering me because it wasn't really uh, lined up there. And we'll paste another. So this is really all that you need to do um, in order to create an editable. PDF. Okay, just taking your PDF document and making it so that students can't move the actual worksheet document itself, um, but rather, oops, went to the wrong one there. Let's zoom out so that you can you can see it all. Um, but so that they can see the document, read the document, and now interact with the document. The one thing that comes up, um, and I know every class has at least one student who goes over the amount of space that a box gives them um, and gets very nervous if it goes out of the box. We don't want that, right? Um, so there are a couple of options. Sometimes I let students play around with the size of the text. If you trust that they can do that responsibly and not give you a headache on your grading end, um, that's one way to make the text smaller, telling them if it seems like it's going out of the box, they could go down um, one number in their font size that would allow them to fit it. Um, the other options that I give students is that because just like if we were in the classroom, we'd say, oh, go on the back of the paper. Just tell us, you know, the rest on the back. You could have them 
make a text box over on the side to finish their answer. Um, if they really, really, really needed to and wanted to, they could put it right next to it. The other option um, is you can always make a copy and make another slide. So I did that just by clicking on it and you see how it goes around the frame in that yellow orange, control C and then clicking off and control V to paste. And I let my students know that the second copy of this is only if they need to share more in their answer that the box didn't give them enough space for. All right, so again, this is the way to take a digital PDF and make it editable. All you have to do from here is go into your classroom, make it create a new assignment, put the slideshow on there. It should pop up because you're in your G Suite. It should be in your recents. As long as you are logged in, really important that you're logged in to your name um, in your email address, your school email address, the one that is associated with your Google Classroom. Make sure that when you are creating your assignment that you put to make a copy for each student. Um, if you do not do that, then everyone will be logging into the same one. And believe me, that's a crazy headache when you're in the classroom. Um, you don't want to make that mistake when you are remotely teaching. Everyone should have their own copy. So we learned that you can import an image and put it into Google Slides as a background. That's just an image file. An image file is just a picture file. So if you are unsure, like, hey, I don't, I can't find anything digitally, but I have this handy dandy phone that can act like a camera. And I really, really, really wanted to use one of my trusty workbooks that I have. You could take a picture of it as long as you can then put that picture either onto your desktop computer, um, the desktop of your computer, or anywhere on your computer that you can locate it. I say desktop just because that's easy for me. Or if you have the Google Drive app on your phone, just you can upload it to Google Drive right from here. And then when you do your background image, just find your image in Google Drive. I really hope that you see the power in being able to in Google Slides, put an image as a background and then put text box over it. Hopefully it will take some headaches away from you guys. You are doing an absolutely amazing job. It is so hard as teachers to not have things in our comfort zone, things that we've been used to, but we got this.